Last we left off, now Fumi and Ralph Talia have finally arrived. Arrived right in front of Glass. Glass herself, a woman with a black kimono, and two dual war fans. The only problem is, the other three heroes are practically down for the count, hurting extremely bad. One of them li mi missing a limb in terms of Motoyasu, missing one of his arms. Now this is a definitely a problem. Now Fumi isn't sure if he'll be strong enough to beat these people, or beat Glass, especially after seeing the other heroes get battered. But his worries are put away relatively quickly when the fight begins. Yo, what is good everybody? It's your boy Golden Gold the Falls Golden What If, whatever you want to call me. And I'm back. I'm back with What If Now Fumi was the legendary symbiote hero. And I'm not going to waste much more of your time. And we're just going to get right into the What If. Let's get it. The fight begins between Glass and Now Fumi. He tells Raftalia to stay back at least for now. As he begins to fight her, he sees that he overwhelms her by a good margin. Not because of his raw strength, but more because of his technique. At this point, now Fumi has an idea of how to fight these type of people, and he can tell that Glass, for one, isn't the best of fighters, and he's also extremely resistant. Now Fumi just closes the distance, landing crucial blows, and also slicing at Glass whenever he gets the chance. It feels like every blow he's doing is counteracting Glass itself, and Venom even brings this up, saying that Glass is actually weak to them. It seems that Glass has this outer aura about her, something about SP, and they seem to actually sap it away, slowly but surely, at least passively. And now Fumi knew nothing about this, but especially with the convenience of Glass needing this SP of some sorts, the fight is pretty lopsided. Now Fumi slashes more and more, trying to actually kill Glass. Eventually, leading to Rothalia appearing behind Glass in her own Venom form as well, with an extended sword, slicing at her neck, landing a clean slice. And that is the death of Glass. Glass is now dead as now Fumi watches on. Venom even remarks that Rotalia has gotten strong in her own right, and frankly she saw an opening they didn't, and she took it. Wow, that was definitely interesting. They say that as her head begins to bounce around, and fall off the Dutchman's ship. The other three heroes are shocked, but Raftalia and Nafumi immediately pick them up and jump them away to safety. Actually, more or less so that they can get healed and basically not die on them. Luckily, they get the heroes back into the Melromar Kingdom quick enough, but just as they're getting everyone healed, they're called back to the king. The king begins to basically blame Naofumi, saying that if he was there sooner, this wouldn't have happened. But Naofumi says he was handling other waves in other countries, something that they didn't even tell them. The king begins to remark that they summon them, and that they do not care about these other countries. Naofumi shakes his head. You guys sound horrible. Actually horrible. It makes no sense to me. Frankly, you'd be better dead. Honestly. The king then remarks what is he going to do, he won't kill one of the well, people at the top. Now Fumi appears in front of him with a blade at his neck. Don't test me, because I will. I don't care. Not one bit. Just as now Fumi is remarking this to the king though, someone approaches in and begs him not to kill her father. He retracts the blade and turns, turns to see Melty. Being the first time that Naofumi actually sees this young girl, he doesn't actually know who she is. But she explains that she is the heir apparent to the throne, and promises to have everything handled, and that they know, or that she knows, and is telling everybody else, that they are not the criminals here. And Naofumi says he doesn't even care. He doesn't care about them, or Melromark even thinking that, and that he'll be heading off basically to the other countries already. Rotalia agrees and they begin to walk out, but Melty tries to call out to them, but the king tells her to stop. After a little bit of traveling, really not that far, we're talking just the distance of Loot Village, Melty comes running after them with guards in hand as well, 
basically begging them to stay, saying that they need their help and that it's obvious that the other heroes, they're damaged, battered, and frankly, they're not going to stand a chance in these next waves. And Nafumi says that it's not his problem, that they'll be strong enough eventually to handle these waves on their own, and if they decide to die or, or kick the buckets, then they decide to kick the bucket. It's not his fault. Melty says she understands that, but just as she's saying this, a blade comes hurling at her, but Nafumi is able to block it and immediately break it. Now, this I wasn't expecting. But at the end of the day, I might not like royalty, but she is a little girl, and you're not going to kill her. Now Fumi turns immediately, and Venom begins to threaten all of them. Time to die! <laughs> now Fumi charges at all of them, and begins beating them down senseless, and Raltalia kills all of them as well. Melty is shocked to see this, but he says that he apologizes. He didn't want her to see all of the death and destruction, but at the end of the day this is life, and that they wanted her to be assassinated for a reason, so they need to get her out of here. So he picks her up, changing into his larger Venom form, and so does Rautalia, and they jump off immediately, heading towards Shield Frieden, and when they arrive, they're actually shocked to see the Princess of Melramark. But he explains very quickly that the only reason why he brought them here, or brought her here, is because they tried to assassinate her, and he didn't want to leave her there just to die. They all agree and say that's completely fine, and that they'll reach out to the queen and have her meet Melty here. Just as they begin to say this, a shadow appears and pleads ba um, based on the queen's sentiments to, for Naofumi to meet with the queen. In which Naofumi doesn't really have a problem with this, but says that Melty needs to be okay. And they decide that they'll take Melty along so that she, she will be with the queen the entire time. So this journey eventually happens. Wherever the queen is currently, being in another country, they head over really quickly. They head over and they begin speaking with the queen and the queen talks about various things. Three Heroes Church, uh, her husband and also the other daughter and various other things that are going on. And also the fact that the other heroes are extremely, but basically nothing now. That they basically got destroyed by that glass girl and Nafumi had to handle it on his own and, and kill her. Nafumi says that he knows he had to do what he had to do, but frankly, they are becoming a crutch. And that they need to survive so that the waves don't get harder. That he's heard about all of that before from the grapevine and also, well, Venom learning about it throughout the times of travel. And she, she nods, saying that they do need to get stronger. Uh, she's not sure how, but they do. Venom then brings something up. You know, they could just become one of us. It'd be pretty simple that way. Yeah, I know that, but I don't even think that's how that works. Since that you're kind of my weapon in a way, I'm pretty sure you can't do that. It wouldn't work. It would cancel out all the leveling capabilities. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Aren't you like some genius with like a photographic me- Never mind. That doesn't matter. He begins to speak back with the queen, and she asks about Venom. As he, she asks about him, he shows up in a head form to the right of Nafumi and begins to speak as well to the queen. They talk for a bit, and Nafumi decides that he will handle the Three Heroes Church and see what he can do. Rautalia says that she wants to actually handle this other thing. She's heard about it from Venom and her own symbiote now, and that, that she wants to go handle this little kingdom and handle the person that enslaved her and her people in which Nafumi is completely for, telling her to be careful and that to use the hive mind of Venom to actually reach back and forth and communicate properly. Nafumi can handle the Three Heroes Church on his own, in which the Queen questions and asks if that's really a good idea, but Nafumi says if he gets the jump on them, it really won't matter. They're not prepared and they don't know that Nafumi already knows this is going to occur. Now Fumi is then sent off with one of the shadows to be guided to the area, at least where the, the Pope is currently, and Raftalia heads off on her own to handle some, you could call it, business. She's actually going to pay a, vi a visit to Rabier, and let's just say it's going to be a messy one. But with back with Now Fumi, Now Fumi is currently approaching really fast on where the church and the, peop and the, the Pope is. When they arrive, 
they see that there are tons and tons of followers getting ready. And now Fumi remarks that he can assume that the followers are going to be his power source. In which Venom confirms, saying that that is definitely the case, and whatever he has in plan or planned, it's going to be powerful if he if he's using that many people. Now Fumi then asks Venom, "What do you think the best idea is? Go after the followers, kill all of them, or do we kill the Pope?" You see, we want to limit casualties, right? Because we're good guys. Well, you know, sort of good guys, but still, lethal protector stuff, you know. Yeah, you're right. I think Pope is probably a good idea. They haven't really done anything wrong, they're just following him blindly. So, Pope, hopefully we can catch them before they actually power up whatever. Now Fumi nods and begins to head off. He begins to try to stealth his way through, eventually getting to exactly where the Pope is, seeing that the weapon is actually being charged currently, and they're speaking about their next move. They're speaking about isolating Ren and Itsuki and hoping to more or less destroy and kill them. But just as they're talking about this, Nafumi stretches out his 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 tendril like like body and grabs the Pope, pulling him in and jumping him away immediately. The Pope screams that for help, but now he's too far away. The followers that he has are too far away in terms of radius to give him power, and he doesn't have the weapon. He basically is enveloped in this venom, or obviously the symbiote, and he's covered entirely as if he was in a prison, very similar to his his venom-like shield prison. After after that, he takes them immediate or takes him immediately to the queen, telling him telling her exactly what was going on, and the Pope is immediately thrown into prison. And luckily they didn't have to do any, you know, lethal protector stuff and kill somebody. But, you know, the Pope is then put away, and then all the followers are also put away relatively quickly. But, obviously now Fumi makes it clear. Look, your husband, whatever, the king, the other princess, they're going to make this extremely hard. They could easily get them out. They cannot be under the same title as you now. They've done too much, way too much treason. This is ridiculous. They have to either be put away, stripped of their title, or something. I hope you understand that. Venom comes out as well and says that he agrees. Yes, yes, they're a bunch of snacks. I should eat them. No, you can't. You can't eat them. Plus the... never mind. Now Fumi then just tells the queen that they need to put them away. At least for now, um, until they can repent for their sins. And the queen agrees and says that she's actually at her last visit and begins to head off back toward the kingdom with a ton of her army. Luckily, everything kind of went relatively smooth, and the, the basically the Three Heroes Church was shut down relatively quickly. Now Fumi then begins to head off, going to meet Raftalia, and when she or when he arrives, he actually sees her dragging out Rabier, seeing him completely battered, and now and now Fumi asks if she really wants to kill him, and Venom appears and says that's some lethal protector stuff right there. But now, now Fumi questions if she really wants to do so, and she says that she really does, slicing his head off as she kills him entirely. Now Fumi nods and says that is a choice that you are going to have to live with. The death and killing someone is of course something that will follow you forever, but if you truly believe that it was needed, then it was needed. Rotalia says that this one was, she just worries the one with glass wasn't. She worries that maybe, just maybe, they could have talked it out a little more, but with the instance and what was going on, she felt that that needed to be done. Now Fumi says that, she, that he would have done the same thing. Given the opening, he would have taken the life of her as well, especially after all the carnage she caused. There's no, basically, hate on that regard. So now Fumi leaves with Ravtalia, and actually during their journey back, they're stopped by someone, stopped by a man. This man asks them to come in, and he wants to speak with them. It's actually Van Richnot, a nobleman there, and he's heard about Nafumi and Raftalia, and asks about everything going on, about his people, and various other things like that, in which they explain that everyone is fine, and that they've been protecting Shield Frieden and Siltvelt to their best of their capabilities, and the damage has been very minimal. 
in which he's extremely happy to hear. He wants to hear that his home, his home is completely safe and all of that. And now Fumi says that he's been trying his best. Unfortunately, a lot of things have to be done in terms of, well, you could call it lethal protector stuff in, according to Venom. In which now Fumi smiles and laughs and Venom appears and starts laughing as well. And he says that unfortunately that killing is one of the things that needs to be done. He wants to not resort to it, but frankly, a lot of the things in terms of Melramark has forced his hand. And well, Van Richnot doesn't blame him, saying that he's not big on killing, but he agrees that sometimes you are pushed to that edge and you have to do what you must do. He nods and now Fumi begins to leave and gets actually a, a little bit of money and some other stuff as a parting gift. They head out and Venom gets fed some food, aka both of them kind of get fed some food, and so does Rav Talia. They arrive back at the Melramar Kingdom in which the Queen has basically arrived before them. Malty, or mine, begins to basically shout, telling her mother that that demon right there is the reason why the Three Heroes Church is basically in jail, and that, that he falsely accused them, blah blah blah, and a bunch of bull malarkey as we know. And the Queen says that actually the Three Heroes Church is bad, and frankly that they were colluding with them so they will actually have punishment as well. In which Malty says that just can't be the case. They're not bad. How would they be bad? But the queen isn't having it, telling the guards to take away the king and Malty. She then tells Naofumi to not worry about some other things, basically to have her handle all of this, and she will call to them once, once she can. And that basically to go out, train, do whatever you gotta do, and they are currently helping recover the other heroes in terms of all the healing process and getting ready for the next the next time they need to fight. But with a loss of limb on one of them and a couple really bad injuries, it might be a little bit before they're ready, which could affect them in this next couple this next couple weeks. But one thing did would arise relatively quickly, and that is the Queen's actually offer to go to the Calmira Archipelago event. This is something insane for Naofumi. Especially with Rotalia, their levels have been skyrocketing like crazy. Now Fumi at an almost level of 80 already, and Rotalia peaking at a level of 70, it's really have been extremely fruitful. But even without the archipelago bonus in terms of experience, Rotalia, to be fair, was kind of on her own for a little bit, so she did train on her own, so that probably benef benefited her a little bit. But even with that said, the archipelago event will be extremely beneficial. So, Rotalia Naofumi leaves with everybody else, seeing that the other heroes are in better shape now. And he asks Venom if there's any way that they could heal them a little bit, and Venom really says no, especially with the one with no arm or one of the arms gone. It just wouldn't work. And they can try, but ugh, the symbiote thing just won't work as well with Rotalia, and it's like the same thing. So, Naofumi agrees to just leave it as is. And as he looks for a room, he sees that all of them are actually covered, and he can't go in any of them. Which is kind of annoying, but Nafumi just goes to a shared bunk. When he arrives in that place, he sees Lark and Therese. This interaction is interesting, because Venom immediately has suspicion on who these people are. Nafumi agrees, and, and Raftalia nudges toward him in agreement as well. Because these people, they seem to have a hatred toward Nafumi. Venom can kind of make a conclusion. If you look at their weapons and analyze the stuff that they have, they're no normal adventurers. He's heard about these vassal here or vassal weapon heroes, but these are not them. They're not part of this world, at least not to his knowledge. Now Fumi doesn't say a word, but just plays along as if nothing's wrong. But even Lark and Therese well are toned down from their normal selves. In canon, maybe Therese was a little bit more perky and happy, and Lark was the same way more or less, but that's not the case here. Lark is a little bit more serious and more monotone, and Therese is kind of happy, but you can tell that she's more faking it than anything. Them killing Glass, if it's that's really their partner, it must have taken a toll on them. They leave eventually, and Nafumi and Rautalia begin their training, and they see Lark and Therese doing the same, but refusing to actually even go near Nafumi and Raftalia. 
After a couple days, they decide that they're going to take a break. Since they've gotten extreme amounts of XP and levels, they're going to go take a small break and then just chill on the beach. But during this time while they're swimming, because obviously Venom would love to, you know, hit the water a little bit. You know, surf up, dude. So he basically goes and swims down with Naofumi. And what they see is something odd. A odd temple? No, they're not so sure. It's actually an area with another dragon hourglass. Now this dragon hourglass says that there's going to be a wave in 48 hours. This is definitely alarming and he immediately goes to tell the queen in which she gets them ships and stuff like that. Once everything is all set and ready, the wave is close to beginning. This is the plan. Now Fumi and the other heroes will handle the giant monster, and then obviously everything else will be handled by the other people there. Before this, he did talk to the other heroes. They weren't really too keen on talking to Naofumi, and Naofumi doesn't really care very much. But frankly, he can't really say a word about it, because at the end of the day, he's been working with the other countries, and they were beaten and battered. So of course they're mad. They're mad more or less at themselves, but they're trying to convince themselves that they're mad at Naofumi. But Naofumi says that it's really not his problem at this point. So once the wave begins, he attacks the giant, well, the giant monster and the main boss, killing it basically instantly, thinking to himself that that was extremely easy. But Naofumi and Venom know that this isn't just over, not right now. He turns as Lark and Therese land in front of them, and their faces are dead serious, scornful at that, and they're ready to fight. I'll give you both a chance to leave. Unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to give the same mercy to your friend. They're shocked to hear this, knowing how did he, or asking how did he even know about that? How did they know that they're related to her? And he just says it's a hunch. I'll give you a chance to leave. I know you want revenge. But we did what we needed to do. She invaded our home world and was going to kill the other three heroes. They say Glass would never have done that, but he cuts them off. I don't know who you are. That's the problem. You invade our world and expect me to show mercy and know exactly what type of people you are. All I saw when I arrived was three heroes on the ground, potentially extremely hurt, one actually extremely hurt and the possibility of all three of them dying right there so now change the scenario wouldn't you do the same they are too angered to hear this and begin to attack Naofumi and Raftalia and Naofumi shakes his head changing into his agent venom like form and Raftalia changes as well they stand there in shock just to feel and see the power up that they just gained from doing such a thing and begin to realize why Glass had so much trouble, why she didn't come back that day. The fight rages on. They begin to strike each other down, Lark going, going at Naofumi and Therese going at Rautalia. It's an even fight, at least that's what they think, but it's really not. The strike that lands on Naofumi just gets absorbed and the scythe gets stuck. Nafumi plunges his hand through Lark's chest and tells him that he gave him a chance, pile driving Lark to the ground and proceeding to stomp on his face. And Nafumi says that he could heal him, he can get him back to basically full health right now. But frankly, he doesn't feel that they even deserve it at this point. They made their choice. He knows how bad, how mad they are. And even against his other judgment, he still, he still decides that through the power that he has and the affinities he has, he heals Lark, healing him entirely, and then backs up. I'll give you another chance. Rautalia, enough. Rautalia stops and jumps away from Therese, putting her sword away. I'll give you a chance. You can leave now. I know the waves will be harder in your world, but maybe something will find its way. Maybe you'll figure something out. Lark says the next time they come back, they'll be ready and that there will not be another chance that they will all die. And Nafumi shrugs. If that's what you want, so be it. Lark and Therese head back into the wave and Nafumi watches as they leave. Raltalia points toward the, 
the chest of Lark, and she sees a piece of the symbiote. Now Fumi says he knows, that it's a link to them, and he could use its power if he wants, but if he comes back here to fight, that power will not be with him. And now Fumi just shrugs as he walks away, back toward where the queen is. Raftalia follows, and the other heroes ask why he didn't kill them, because, frankly, she, he no remorse killed Glass. But he explains that this situation was different. The other heroes argue that it wasn't, but now Fumi shouts at them, telling them to watch their mouths, that they have no right and no position to even be speaking about this. Now Fumi walks away with Raftalia, and later on begins to speak with the queen hearing of their new reward, which is to get the village in his name. More specifically, Raftalia's village. He begins to rebuild, reconstruct, and, and help out all the demi-humans he can find, and now Fumi is known by all the demi-humans as basically their savior, and it's been like this for a little bit. Now Fumi looks off into the distance, not knowing what's ahead of them, and not knowing what will happen with Lark and Therese, wishing that he didn't kill Glass or Rotalia didn't kill Glass, but at the end of the day, your choices have its own consequences, and he even knows that. Rotalia does as well, and they had to do what they that needed to be done. They look off and begin thinking and begin wondering what is ahead of them, what trials will eventually be bestowed upon them, but hopefully they'll be able to handle it. You know, all of you are kind of shoppy, talking about the dish trials in the future. It doesn't even matter, because the lethal protectors will defeat them. Now Fumi smiles and so does Rotalia as they laugh as the, this story comes to an end. I know season two of Shield Hero is out. I'm tired of people telling me that. Guys, I understand. I get it. There's two episodes out. I'm not covering two episodes. Someone even asked me that. They were like, why don't you just cover those two episodes? That doesn't make sense. I, I, I'm not going to do that. There, there's not enough content. It would add five minutes to the fucking content. So there's no reason to do that. I just want to make that clear and transparent. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed nonetheless. Once half of season two at least is out, I might start on that and start doing season two. But with that said, I hope all y'all enjoyed. I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later. I don't want to waste what's left.